talking today about a romantic thinker who said that you should believe whatever brings a sense of harmony and well-being to you. There are times in life, he said, when you want to believe that you have freedom of choice and you have free will. Other times in life, you might want to believe that you have no free will, that you're just acting under impulse, you can't help yourself. In other words, what you believe is chosen for its comfort value. Now, it should come as no surprise that he also believed that your actions had no long-term consequences anyhow. So outside, it didn't really matter what you did. The only thing that mattered was how you felt inside. And there are a lot of people, even to this day, who find those ideas comforting. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you feel comfortable with what you believe. And you can change your beliefs as you see fit. The underlying assumption in all these cases is that the universe is one large, wonderful, harmonious totality. And that whatever harm is done gets wiped away by the fact that life just keeps going on and on and on in its infinite fertility. That may be comforting, but it doesn't really do much to end suffering. It can soothe it for a little while. But actually, if you hold to beliefs like that, you end up doing a lot of things that are going to lead you to suffer. So just like comfort food, this kind of comfort dharma is not all necessarily good for you. I mean, the Buddha does offer comfort in his genuine teachings. There's the ultimate happiness of nirvana. And along the way in the practice, there's the well-being of concentration. This is what we're working on right now, to have a sense of being at home in the present moment. You feel like you belong here. The mind fits with the breath, the breath fits with the body, everything fits together. You need this sense of comfort because a lot of the teachings are going to be like medicine. They may be a little harsh, they may be hard to take, but it's a lot easier to take if you've got a sense of well-being going in the mind, in the body. Because the Buddha is going to be handing us a lot of tools to take apart a lot of the things we believe and a lot of things that we hold to. And it's hard to let go of the things that we hold to. It's hard to pick up those tools and use them to take apart our wonderful ideas, our wonderful feelings, emotions, all these other things that we cling to as being really good about ourselves. And there are times when it's easy to see that you have certain tendencies that are harmful and you don't like them, and you'd be happy to be rid of them. But there are other things in ourselves that we like. We're not going to let go of them, even though it turns out that on the ultimate level we're, we've got to let go. So first we soothe the mind, we give it a sense of well-being here with the breath. So you feel at home in the present moment. You feel nourished by the breath. Because the things we like are the things we feed on. The Buddha wants you to have something better to feed on. So when the time comes to take his tools and turn them on your favorite feelings and your favorite ideas and your favorite ways of identifying yourself with this, that, or the other thing, you'd be more willing to do it. Now he gives you these tools. not. As something to believe in. This is something you sometimes hear when you hear scholars describing the Dharma, that the Buddha wants you to have right view, and that's the goal of the path, is to see that, yes, there are five aggregates, and what you are is just five aggregates, or whatever the teaching may be. Your sense of who you are, or your identity as a being, is just a conventional truth, but the real truth is these ways of analyzing things, the 
five aggregates, the six sense spheres, the six properties. Those, they say, are ultimate truths. The forest tradition doesn't teach that at all. For them, all these things are conventions, and some conventions are more useful than others for putting it into suffering. If you hold on to your sense of who you are, you're going to keep on suffering. If you learn to use these kinds of analysis, taking things apart in terms of where is the feeling, where is the perception, where is the thought construct? What's the bodily element in all these things? Sort them out, and you begin to realize that there's not that much that is really worth holding on to. And you see things in that way, and you let go. And you not only let go of your old identity, but once you've used these tools, you put them down, too. Because from the point of view of the forest tradition, the only thing that really is an ultimate truth is nirvana, or release, the deathless, whatever you want to call it. This is why when they talk about convention, the Thai word is samut, they pair it with wimut, which is release. They don't pair it with ultimate truth, because after all, this, even these ultimate truths, quote unquote, of the five aggregates and so forth, they're tools. They're conventions, too. They're like a vocabulary that tasters learn. Professional tasters need to have a really big vocabulary to describe all kinds of flavors. And they found that the more words you have to describe them, the more fine distinctions you can see. And it's the same way with learning to see things in terms of the five aggregates. They're tools. They help you see things and make distinctions you might not have made otherwise. They're conventions, but they're useful conventions, as opposed to the conventions that make us hold on cling to our suffering. And seeing things just as five aggregates or just as the sixth sense media. Or analyzing your body into the thirty-two parts to overcome lust. These may be difficult because they're going to force you to pry loose your tight grip on things. But it's a lot easier to do when you have the sense of well-being. This is genuine comfort food in the sense that it's also good for you. It's not just nice tasting in the short term. Like a meatloaf with a lot of gravy, where it goes in and gives you a lot of cholesterol in your bloodstream. This is food that may not taste good right now, but it's going to be good for you. And as you get to know it, you find that you really do prefer the taste of this. But even more so, you prefer the taste of what it can provide for you. So again, we're not here to believe that there are five aggregates, and there's no question saying, well, what about if there's six, ag six aggregates, or what about if there are just four, or whatever. That's not the issue. The issue is what's the most useful way of thinking about things and looking at things? What are the most useful conventions for getting you to what really is the ultimate truth, which is release? So sometimes it's hard to let go of your old way of looking at things, and the practice of concentration helps smooth the way. Because some of the things you learn about yourself, one, you learn about your own stupidity and holding on to things. Two, you learn that you've been fooled. Of course, there's nobody out there fooling you. You're fooling yourself again. Like that story of the blind man who was given a dirty old rag and told by his friends, okay, this is a nice white piece of cloth. Take good care of it. And so he takes very good care of it, thinking he's got something special. And then his relatives come, and they take him to a doctor, and the doctor is able to cure him of his blindness. He looks at the cloth, and he realizes that he was deceived. So on the one hand, it's unpleasant to realize that you've deceived yourself. 
and things that you used to cling to are really not worth it. But then beyond that, there's a sense of true well-being that comes from knowing, okay, you're not deceived anymore. That's where the real comfort of the Dharma lies. As the Buddha said, the, the end of suffering isn't just a negative thing. And you think there's anything negative about it, you've got to change your conception, because you're not going to be willing to let go of the stuff you've already got. You've got to realize, whatever you're holding on to, it's a lot better when you let go. And the terms of analysis that the Buddha gives us, there are tools for helping us to pry loose our grip. And when the grip is no longer holding on to these things, you don't even need the tools. Everything gets let go. That's the ultimate truth and the ultimate comfort.